In this video, we are going to give you a brief guide to using a hazer for your worship ministry. A hazer is an important piece of equipment that's gonna allow you to actually make use of your lighting system at your church so you can see the beams and it really can just affect the overall uh, design of your stage and the look of, of what your lighting is going to look like, especially uh, on camera. So I've got Jordan Miller here of Our Savior Lutheran Church. We just did a tech tour and we walked through their entire system, so check out that video. But I wanted to make this separate video with Jordan about the hazer, going through the journey of, you know, why do we need a hazer? What hazer should we get? How do we operate the hazer? so then we don't have people complaining about you know haze and smoke and you know having you know, respiratory issues uh, in their worship service so they found a way to utilize a really great hazer it's getting them great results um, and that they're going to show us the entire setup in this video if we haven't met yet my name is jake goslin the creator of churchfront.com helping you lead gospel center in tech savvy worship don't forget to check out all of our resources down below specifically our worship ministry toolkit which i'm going to list all the gear that we're going to cover here in this video and this hazer setup in that toolkit so download the free toolkit it's got a ton of great resources there uh, for you and your ministry before we talk about the hardware software and the co2 you're using to run your haze here at our Savior Lutheran. Tell us about kind of philosophically, why did you want to implement a hazer in this new sanctuary that you guys have built? Yeah. Um, why, why would others want to do so? Originally, you know, it, was, it wasn't a part of the plan. Like it was kind of an added later thing and maybe something we could do, but it, it became kind of apparent to us in the pandemic that, um, you know, we were doing broadcast. I mean, everything was online. And so one of the first things we said is how can we just enhance that broadcast experience? And the, I kind of just said, I think seeing our lights would add a little bit of nuance to it. So mm -hmm. the only way to do that is with haze. Mm -hmm. So in order to, you know, if you're going to buy expensive lights or you're going to have color featured or beams featured, having haze is one way to really accent that uh, in a church setting. And so we don't, we don't try to overkill it. We're not trying to just fill the whole room with smoke and think that we're rock stars or anything like that. But it, we have a very driven purpose of, okay, we want to make sure, you know, who's singing is highlighted, maybe who's playing is highlighted, um, that we can, you know, make the lights move a little bit, that they have purpose for praising the Lord too, adding color, um, and just kind of enhances that, that broadcast too. Because even still as Lutherans, we don't move a whole bunch, but so we can at least let the lights move a little bit. <laughs> That's great. That's a great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Add some dynamics to, to the service. Um, the uh, not only for broadcast though, but even in the room, the, yeah. the, the difference because you showed me you turn the light system on uh, before you had haze in the room. Then we turn the haze on. Now it's really evenly dispersed throughout the room. Um, and just to be able to make use of the really high end lighting fixtures you guys have, like those aren't they're not cheap. They do a lot of cool things. And you know the the particles in the air are what's giving you the ability to actually see the beams, see the zooming effect or the gobo effects um, that give texture to the beams. Um, so it really does make a pretty huge impact. After I saw this in the room, we don't have haze at South Fellowship Church. Um, that might be a interesting battle, like probably for many of you out there, it'd be a battle to try to implement it. Um, but I'm like, after seeing this, I'm like, oh, we have to do it because you can tell, like you can see those beams on the stage and what's nice though, when I'm talking to you, I can't see any haze right. in between us. I can only see it when I'm looking up at the lights and stuff. Right. And that's what's so nice about, especially the hazer that we have mm -hmm. and what we use. Um, it, you can make it, I mean, you have to work at it a little bit, but you can make it so that it's not a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, and even when we darken the house lights, it, it seems to go away entirely too. Yeah. So there, there's a balance and a bit of a dance, um, but you can make that haze kind of work in your favor uh, versus being a distraction for people. So talk us through how you talk to your leaders and maybe some of the congregation members about implementing a haze machine and, and did you have to navigate certain objections about it? What did you say? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing when somebody walks in, they'd be like, you know, who's having a barbecue or whatnot? You kind of have to phase through those. But if, but if you make it purposeful and intentional of why we're doing what we're doing, we want to make sure the, the people online have, you know, an experience of church and see things a different way. Uh, God made, said, let there be light, you know, and so we have this cool opportunity to use uh, lighting and color to maybe accent or bring a different emotion to things within worship, uh, which is which is really, really cool. Liturgically as well. I mean, we have colors in our liturgy, so why not accent them and maybe make it a wider beam, a tighter beam? Um, so we're able to talk about it that way. And I always like 
like to tell people too, I mean, if the Nebraska Huskers can use lights in their favor to get excited about their team, why can't we do it to get excited for God? So maybe you're new to the concept of a hazer. What is it? What does it look like? Well, here you go. Here is a hazer. This is the pea soup phantom hazer. That's a very interesting name it for is. a hazer. So how did you come across this? Why did you get this hazer? Um, this was actually recommended to us from House Right Productions. They had um, messed with it a little bit, and they had had really good stories about it. When I told them, too, I wasn't looking for you know a big smoke machine that we had to turn on all the time that would have puffs of smoke that would happen during the sermon um, that would make a huge mess and leave water and bubbles everywhere. This was kind of their solution they suggested, and I have loved it. Um, it's been fantastic for what we do. Um, it's a CO2-based haze, which is a little bit different than water-based haze. It still takes... Um, hazer fluid, but it very literal takes little sips of that fluid. Um, I think I've only had to fill it up twice, once when we got it, and then once I think last year that it had emptied out. Um, so you're, you're, so the actual hazer fluid, you're only filling up like once a year, once yeah, every year once and a half? A year. Yeah, okay. basically. Wow. And then there's a CO2 tank attached to it. Um, so when you turn it on, we just have a DMX switch that we turn it on to control it. Then I just come over here, turn on the CO2 for a little bit, let it blow for about a minute and a half. Um, that's what seems to fill, fill our room size. And then we um, just let it hang for a while. And that's been the nice thing about this. It doesn't leave a big water mess because it's CO2 based. And then it just kind of expands and hangs because it seems to be a little bit lighter than, than water-based haze. So now we're on the other side of the pipe and drape here. So the hazers right there on stage. We're backstage. Here is the CO2 tank. Um, so tell us, like, what's the cost to get one of these and to how often do you have to refill it? What's that cost? Yeah. So, I mean, when the biggest thing is just buying the tank to first, and then when you refill it, you actually just change out tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had a local... Uh, a dealer here in town that has carbon dioxide, you know, they'll give to soda pop and you can get smaller sizes. I just got a larger size so I didn't have to finagle with it too much. And so that was kind of the big expense to start off. I think it was like $100, $200. Um, and then when it's empty, I have a spare tank that I can just put on and then I go to take this and get it replaced for 40 bucks a pop. Okay. And so then how often? I would say probably six to eight months um, changing out cases, but it seems like this one's lasted forever. I don't know why this, there's more CO2. It's non-flammable CO2, um, but it's in the tank. So we just turn it on, let it go, and then close it up once kind of we time it. So we've kind of figured out a formula here for our church of how much is good, or you know, if, if maybe this Sunday there's a little more lights, let's add a little bit more, or maybe this Sunday we can draw back a little bit. So it's been of a step. Yeah, so your service is at uh, 9. 9 o'clock. And, and you have two services, yep. right? Two contemporary services. Two contemporary. So tell us exactly the time that you run this and how long it, yeah. like. So the band will rehearse at 7, mm -hmm. and then at 8 o'clock band gets done, that's when we crank up the hazer, mm -hmm. um, some to wear between 8 and 8.10. We'll have our production meeting while it's still expanding. And then by 9 o'clock, I feel like the haze gets really good. After that 9 o'clock service, we'll kind of look at the, the room. If there's kind of more people, it might have filtered out. So we'll run it for another 30 seconds um, before that 1030 service. So it has a little more time yeah. to disperse. So they're really only running it for about a minute and a half. You yeah, said the first minute time. Minute and a half the first time and then yeah. maybe 30 seconds the second time. Yeah, and then you don't have to think about it really much the rest of the service. And then, yeah, like you guys saw the footage on the camera just now, how very evenly distributed in the room it is. And how much, though, does that do have to do with your HVAC system? Um, a little bit. So we have found in the colder months, especially here in Nebraska, when the heat's on, it doesn't disperse as much right away. So we have to start it a lot earlier. In the summer, when the HVAC system's really cranking, we might have to do it for maybe two minutes mm -hmm. just because there's so much air moving around. It doesn't just hang. It filters out throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had where, you know, uh, Christmas Eve service where there was 800 that came and it just filtered out really fast. Okay. So um, it's it's a bit of a a bit of a dance, but I think you know you start to play with it with different weather. Okay, so the more people, the more movement, mm -hmm. it's going to you're gonna have to just have more haze. Yeah, it sounds like okay. Yeah, at least with this hazer. Yeah. So let's talk about the numbers. The the pea soup hazer, such a funny name for a hazer. So you're looking at at least a few thousand dollars. I think you said around 3,000, yep. maybe maybe more, maybe a little bit less um, for the initial cost of that. And then it sounds like the maintenance for the CO2 and the fluids, probably another two to 300 bucks a year, some, somewhere around there. Um, but I don't know, that seems pretty uh, worth it. I've heard a lot of people having to spend a ton on, especially with water-based hazers, like a ton on the fluid, because you yep. tend to go through it a lot more um, that way. And plus the hazer themselves, again, still a pretty big uh, initial upfront cost. So sounds like though, 
you've been using this for how many years now? Uh, just since, yeah, 2020. Yeah, so a so. year, but you're still happy with it. Yeah, it's and we use it every We use it every Sunday, you know, when we've, I've done a couple events too. There's been like trivia nights in here and yeah. weddings where we just do beams or some kind of game show. So it's nice yeah. to have a little bit of fun with it too. So it yeah. adds another layer to production at church. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you, the, it looks awesome. You guys are having fun with lighting design. I don't think your church has fallen away from the faith at all since nope. using your hazer. Nope. So <laughs> you guys are staying, just walking with Jesus still. They're doing okay there. So uh, thanks for that walkthrough, Jordan. We'll link all this stuff down below that we showed you in this video. Definitely check out the tech tour we did uh, on Jordan's entire setup that they have here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.